the victory. Absolutely. All right, let's bring in uh, our panelists tonight. Ahmed Mohammed, trial attorney for CARE. John Neffinger, Democratic analyst and former communications director for the Democratic National Committee. Uh, we are waiting on our Republican strategist. If we get him, we will bring him in. Uh, we just got him. Ed Martin, Republican strategist, joins us. Gentlemen, I want to thank all of you for joining us tonight. And uh, Ed, I'm going to start with you and ask you, is this a victory for the American people? We have a president who campaigned on and said that we should ban all Muslims until we can get our immigration policy straight. We know he's made negative comments about uh, certain African and, and Haiti uh, African countries. Um, is this a victory, though, for America? Well, I think it is. I think it is and for two reasons, really. One is because the system worked. Uh, we had a judge in Hawaii, district court judges who took up the issue and had a nationwide uh, you know, injunction, and it went to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court ruled. I think that actually shows that the president and all of us are hemmed in by a system of checks and balances. But the second reason is I think um, you know, it's not a Muslim travel ban. It's a ban on people coming from certain countries. And that's a judgment that we ask our commander in chief to make. He's making it and the election had consequences. So I don't think anything dramatic has happened except the systems worked. And now we can go forward and see. And, and you know, in a couple of years, people can hold the president accountable for his policies at the next election. I want to point out, you're looking at a graphic on the screen. That is incorrect. If we could take that graphic down, because the travel ban is, it's taken on a couple different forms, uh, whatever you want to call it. Ahmad, I want to bring you in here. Uh, Ahmed, sorry. Uh, as, as we move ahead here, there was a lot of talk initially in the first uh, months of this White House. They were saying, this is not a travel ban. Sean Spicer had said that many times. Um, and and as, as Ed mentioned, uh, there are six Muslim majority countries in here. There are dozens more than that. Uh, so what does your organization do moving forward from this? Because the Supreme Court has spoken. What's the next step? Thank you first for having me on. Uh, let me just say this is a Muslim ban. It bans uh, Muslims from reuniting with their families, separating families apart. Um, in the Supreme Court, in this case, they abdicated their role. And this isn't the first time that they've, uh, you know, allowed morally repugnant policies to go forward. Koromansu comes to mind, Dred Scott comes to mind, uh, Plessy versus Ferguson. Uh, as those decisions were later on uh, found to be morally repugnant, so will this decision. Uh, moving forward, uh, you know, CARE and American Muslims and our allies, we're going to go uh, and rally uh, our supporters, rally politicians, uh, protest, uh, and ask Congress uh, to step in and do their job um, uh, and to tell the president uh, to end this Muslim ban, to defund um, you know, uh, the executive branch to make sure that no monies, uh, no American taxpayer dollars go uh, to keeping American Muslims from uniting with their families. Uh, Realistically though, Ahmed, we, we, that, that's not going to happen under this administration. No. We, we, no. We, we know that. And when you mention uh, the Muslim ban, I mean, there, North Korea is on the list, Venezuela is on the list. No, right. no, exactly. that is window dressing. Uh, and, and let me explain why. Yeah. North Korea, number one, uh, it is illegal for North Koreans to even travel outside their country to the United States. In the past year, there was maybe 40 individuals from North Korea to travel to this country. Uh, that's an irrelevant country put in there to make it uh, seem like as if it is not a Muslim ban. Uh, Venezuela is included in there, but it's really important when you look at Venezuela, the president did not ban Venezuelan citizens from traveling to the United States. He banned the individuals in charge of the immigration policies and systems in Venezuela. Those officials are banned from coming into the United States. So the president, he wants uh, to hold parties and individuals accountable for their actions. He knows how to do it. Venezuela is how you do it. You don't separate American citizens from their families overseas, like our plaintiffs have been separated. Um, and you don't keep innocent and innocent civilians, human beings who have human rights and dignity um, from entering this country for the simple purpose that they happen John, uh, to pray differently me, than you do. Let me jump in for just a second so we can bring in John to get his reaction to all sure. of this. John? Thanks, John? Yeah, so here's how I look at this. The president has a lot of power to keep us safe and lots of discretion when it comes to immigration. And that's a good thing. We need him to be our commander in chief. But what our constitution says is he cannot discriminate on the basis of religion. And that's exactly what happened here. All the lower courts that looked at this said there was clearly nothing to do with security here. All of our 9-11 attackers came from Saudi Arabia. That's not even on the list. But what he said again and again and again on the campaign trail and since he won the election was he wants to ban Muslims. He wants a Muslim ban. And so guess what? The lower courts actually paid attention to that, took 
took him seriously and said, okay, so we see what you're doing here. You're banning Muslims. That's not okay under our Constitution. The Supreme Court now, with the seat that they stole and gave to Gorsuch because they didn't confirm uh, President Obama's nominee, has essentially said, la, 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 we're not listening to you, all those things that President Trump said about what he's actually doing here. They just kind of skipped over that and said, well, look, he's got some discretion, so we'll let him do what he wants and ignored the religious discrimination at the foundation of this, which is also ironic because they've decided a lot of cases recently on the basis of uh, forbidding religious discrimination against their political allies. So the hypocrisy here is pretty fragrant, um, I guess I would say, and it's pretty unfortunate that essentially what's happening here is there's a political decision being made that, look, a lot of Americans can't even make ends meet right now, barely, if that, and, and Congress is passing budgets that are cutting Social Security and cutting Medicare. What this, this administration wants to do is keep us talking about I immigrants with brown skin who are going to come over our, our borders and threaten us. It, it, because that's kind of brown boogeymen distract us from the real economic policies that are hurting this country. Ed, go ahead and jump in. I, I, I know you're chomping at the bit here. Well, I mean, look, both, both of my colleagues here are just throwing up uh, distractions. This has nothing to do it's with... It's all about distractions, Ed. That is true. Korematsu, Korematsu was about internment camps done by FDR. You know, Dred Scott was about slavery and was a terrible decision. In this case... The rule of law, guys, says that the presence in charge of national security, there's nothing, Muslim is not brown skin. There's plenty of white Muslims, unless you're being racist and saying Muslims have to be brown skin. Yeah. And in this case, what the president <laughs> is saying is simply this. It's not about Muslim or anything else. It's about nations that are not vetting the people coming into America. And here's the thing. We're no, going to put America Ed, you got to be kidding me. This has nothing to do with American security. Stores. There is no credible security yeah, expert anywhere who will say that. Interrupt you. I didn't interrupt you. We're Go gonna for put it, Americans Ed. first. And the law, by the way, you guys just said you like the law. Yeah, right. The district courts ruled, but the Supreme Court, five to four, is the law of the land. You guys agree with the rule of law, right? It's the law of the land because Merrick Garland isn't sitting in that seat because oh, Mitch McConnell oh, oh. didn't convert him. So I wish I could agree with you, Ed, that the system worked, but in this case, it clearly has not. Ed, um, Ed let me, you want to jump in there? Yeah, just because the Supreme Court has decided this case doesn't make it right. It's morally wrong. It's legally wrong. Korematsu was the law of the land then. Dred Scott was the law of the land then. That, that didn't make them right. Uh, and this is very similar in parallel to Korematsu, and it's very sad because in not Korematsu, the Supreme Court said, we're not going to look beyond what the president has told us. He says it's national security. It must be national security. That is exactly what the Supreme Court has done today. They have decided um, to close their eyes shut and be blind to reality uh, and created a whole scenario where President Trump's promise that he would you know, create a ban on, on Muslims from entering this country as if that never happened. It's very destructive in the court. Uh, they, they really did not consider the pain and suffering that Muslims, it, which some of them are U.S. citizens, uh, are going through. It, it, right before we go, uh, when, when the president ma mentioned the, the Muslim, when he wanted to ban Muslims on the campaign trail, when he, when he said that, it was a temporary ban until we could figure out what the hell was going on. That, those are his exact words. Um, it's been two years. Um, the Republican Congress hasn't done a anything when it comes to immigration. What, what, is ex what, what, what has to be done from here on out so we won't, won't be talking about this moving forward, Ed? Well, I mean, the first thing that and the president and the president ran on this is we need to build the wall. We need but to secure our nation. So, and, and wait, um, and when it comes to this ban, mm -hmm. we need to make sure that nations that are bring, letting people come to our country, they have a system that vets them before they get to us. And that's not illegal, unconstitutional, uh -huh. or anything else. That's totally within the tradition of our governing. John. If that's what this were about, Ed, you and I would agree. This is not about security. This is about exactly what Donald Trump said over and over and over it was about. It's about banning Muslims because Ahmed, he we'll wants to last, scare us. Last 10 seconds here, Ahmed. It's really important. The president won't act. The Supreme Court won't act. It's up to the people. It's we the people uh, who control what happens to this country. And our country is going through uh, a disaster at the moment. And we need people to go out in the streets. And we need them to register to vote. And we need them to vote. And vote those individuals out of office if they're not willing to stand up to the president. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Certainly this is a debate that will continue. Uh, and speaking of voting, we're going to talk about that coming up next. Thank yeah. you, guys.